The last quarterfinals matchup of the day is about to go underway between the Quinnipiac University Bobcats, number six seeded Bobcats, and of course, the number three seeded Maris Red Foxes. And Maris trying to fight their way back into it. This could be the last game of their season if they don't get back into it. Kanui to Morse, puts it away! Let's see Morris going back to back. We and lost to Marist early in the season. That was kind of our timing right before we kind of flipped the switch and them not expecting us to come at them the way they did. And then they were like, oh crap, we got to fight back harder. And our team was like, nope, we're going to push you down even more. Losing against Marist um, in the middle of the season, we knew that since we had third chance at them that this was going to be our chance and this was for the show who we were. The only team to have an upset today in the MAC quarterfinals, you know, what does it mean to be able to pull that off? I mean, was it really an upset? Um, Low I mean, seed versus higher seed. Okay, I'll take that. I guess it's fair enough. It's just oh, business as usual. Um, I, I know the talent that we have. How much of an emphasis is team really involved in the offense out there? Oh, it's everything. Well, this is how we train. You know, this is what we want on a regular basis. And um, like I said before, we're peaking at the right time where all the pieces are starting to click. And now the story of how family matters to one university volleyball team. How this team, Quinnipiac, came back from near elimination of the program 13 years later. It was a hard time for the team in the wake of that lawsuit because, you know, they were trying to win, obviously, to show why uh, the program should have been saved. They weren't. And, you know, when you start losing, that is when culture issues arise. Any season you're only winning two games uh, is, is a really, really tough season to get through mentally. When I joined the team as a freshman, Quinnipiac had probably won six games total the past four years. They were, you know, one in 30, two in 26, three in 23. Um, really not good. Never making playoffs. People that were there, they had kind of said that they're actually at the cellar of, of the MAC every single year. I looked into it from 2005 to 2016, they won a combined 33 games. But things started changing immediately. 2016, they end up winning 21 games that year, which was a program record for Division One. For them to have a 21-win season uh, was just kind of on another level. They went all the way to the MAC championship game against Fairfield. Definitely had a lot more size, uh, especially in the front lines. Uh, everyone was at about you know six foot, so they were a very good defensive team as far as blocking up at the front line. That's what kind of separated that team. In 2018, the university fired the team's former coaches, Chris Saplinski and Chad Davis. Despite the recent success just two years ago, it looked like the Bobcats were heading back to old habits. They really just didn't look the same and it looked like things weren't really getting better. He never really seemed to be like a, a, a super big players coach. It was always like he was the general and, and his players were his soldiers. It was more of a domination mindset when things weren't going as well. Sometimes we were missing upperclassmen leadership. Sometimes, you know, injuries had a huge play. Sometimes I feel like, you know, there's a time and a place for a dominant mindset, a um, like, kill or be killed kind of mindset. The new kids in the block, Kyle Robinson and Katie Uricki, joined Quinnipiac at the start of 2018. Uricki joined the staff after Robinson was hired, an opportunity she knew she had to take. I was previously working as an athletic trainer, which was great. I just realized that my heart was in the sport and that my true passion is, is coaching. At the time that Kyle got hired, I realized that, you know, I'm going to go for this. Like, I have to try the, this coaching thing. And the position opened up, and I walked into Kyle's office one day as a stranger and um, enabled myself an interview, and here we are. My own leadership style. I think I would hope my own playing experience, or I know my own playing experience is um, valuable here. It was really as interesting to see someone who wanted the job so bad, especially knowing the history of the program, um, knowing how much uh, or how many painful things and situations she had gone through. 
um, but she still wanted to be here. I mean, that was definitely scary. She was still a great leader after that and someone that I was extremely close to on the team. Kyle asked me about her and I was like, oh, she's great. I mean, she basically was an assistant coach to us my freshman year anyway. When I do recognize that someone has a passion for the things that I'm passionate about and really this sport and, and this place, I would be doing a disservice not to try to give back to her, not to try to mentor her. And he did give back. The partnership, three years and counting, has thrived on putting others first before themselves. He was just the nicest guy. When you first met him, you could tell he was so warm and welcoming, and, and he was so excited that there were students wanting to cover his team. The thing that he does, that Kyle does so well, that I didn't have as a player, is creating a family. Like, we really, I know that everyone says that about their program, but like, we really have a family here. There's no cliques, everyone is super tight, which is kind of hard to run in with 15 girls on a roster. He's got that cool like vibe. He's like, listen, you're good at volleyball. Like, I'm so we, we're glad you came here. Like, we're all a family. Like, you're in or you're out. And I was like, I'm in. You know, like, I want to be here. And the first time I met him, he asked me how my brother Alex was, and I had no idea how he even knew <laughs> who my brother was because this is my first time ever meeting him. So he kind of he really does put in the work to know who your family is. Quinnipiac has found someone that cares about, you know, the girls and the coaching staff on the court just as much as off the court. You know, he cares about our grades, he cared about you know, our families, he's very connected to our families. Family is everything to me. It's the way I was brought up in not just the, the sport, but through life, you know. I have really, really amazing parents. I have a really amazing family on both sides, my mom and my dad's side but they also taught me to have really amazing people who aren't blood to learn to adapt them to family. Shifting back to the 2021 MAC postseason, the Bobcats trail the Bronx two sets to O, but we're trying to come back into it in this set three. Here's the jump, that one's deep and in. Kanui to Diaz, blocked, and that is the game. The Ryder Bronx take Quinnipiac in three straight sets, but a valiant effort for the Bobcats. It's always a bummer when you when we feel like we're the better team and then that outcome doesn't go the way that you wanted. It's always a tough one, right? Especially, um, you know, every year we want to honor the seniors and get that win for them. Obviously, as seniors, we're going to cry and, you know, we're sad, we're done. But to see them also be just as upset, because um, they understand, like, this is our last hurrah and, you know, they just... You know, we lose as a team. The emotions is what it's all about, the good and the bad. So um, you got to take these moments and uh, make the best of them. You know, that's what we look for out of uh, people who are all in. The comeback from near removal is still in progress, but regardless of any prior news, this team right now is here to stay. Well, I'm really happy to uphold the meaning of volleyball and why volleyball should be here. You know, we started out pretty crappy in the beginning, but we proved ourselves and we proved to other people that we have what it takes. I've dedicated almost like eight years of my life to this program. And when I came here as an 18 year old, my goal was to win a MAC championship. You know, I was coming here to help build a program as a player and to be able to continue that now, it didn't play out in the exact way that I thought it, but how crazy that I'm back as a coach and I know we are gonna to get to that same goal just from a different path. I have to feel some level of being fortunate, right? We're fortunate to be here right now, which is a lot of that team building mentality that we, you know, we've been talking about. This could have all gone away and we would not be here as a crew, you know, as a family. To, to say, hey, let's do right by volleyball, and let's show them why they should never ever think about cutting this program again.